Hello, this is John from KEVARPROGRAMMING.COM and in this tutorial we're going to look at how to use the wildcard with um, generic par parameterized classes or parameterized however you say it. Um, so um, this is a quite advanced topic which you can um, definitely skip if you just want to get to grips with really basic Java and in future tutorials we're going to return to some more um, perhaps more important topics but um, nevertheless this is um, a useful thing to know and this seemed like a logical place to put it in this course so um, let's take a look um, and now for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to create a couple of classes up here let's have a class machine uh, which of course implicitly extends object because if you have a class that doesn't extend anything in fact it extends the object class that's object with a capital O and I'm also going to have a class um, let's make this some kind of machine um, so camera will do uh, which is a kind of machine and let's say camera extends machine okay now um, we saw in the last tutorial um, some exam examples of parameterized classes of generic classes that can work with um, any type of object and you have to specify the type of object when you instantiate the class um, so an example is array list which if you want to store strings in an, in an array list you have these, this, uh, these kind of diamond brackets and you put the type of thing that you want to store in the array list here which is string in this case and let's call that um, list and set that equal to a new array list and before um, Java 7 I have to say string again here as well so let's just do that and I'll add the import there for array list um, now there's um, that's pretty simple but there's kind of um, something that uh, tends to catch people out here uh, regarding the passing of this um, to a method as a parameter so let's take an example there I'll create a uh, public static void show list method here uh, I may, I'm just making it static because we don't have a, an object of the class app so um, to be able to call this method without doing new app it's going to have to be static and here I'm going to say show list and I'm going to change the list so that it takes as its um, argument a, um, an array list of strings just like this and let's call that list as well um, and now I can pass that my array list of strings and show list could for example just iterate through the list and say for um, string um, string let's say just value in list then I could just do sys out on that value like this um, so that should all work and if I add some strings here list.add um, let's say one and two I should do the trick and I'll just run that and see what happens so let's just save app.java so there we go it says one two so that's really straightforward actually um, if you've got an array list holding strings or whatever and you want to pass it to a method it's really easy to do that you just have to remember that the type includes the, um, the type parameter there now there's a, a bit of a complication here um, let's take a slightly different example let's make this an array list of uh, machines so I've got a machine class up here and actually let's also give that a um, I'm going to right click in machine and I'm going to go to source generate to string and let's just create a to string method here and um, I'm just going to return something that lets us see that it is a machine let's say I am a machine like that so now um, if I change this to machine as well I can now add machine objects in here let's say new machine and let's have two of them although they're going to be identical 
because machine doesn't have any um, it doesn't have any um, instance variables at the moment, but that's fine. Uh, now, as long as I change this to machine as well, um, we have no problem. I can run that, and um, well, once I fix the errors, because uh, yeah, this has got to also be machine here, and that should be fine. So let's run that, and there we go. We're outputting the contents of the list. Uh, now, supposing you have another array list here. Um, which contains a subclass of machine, like camera. So let's let's give camera a two-string method as well, so that we can distinguish camera from machine. And I'll just say here, I am a camera. And let's just copy this stuff. And I'll do Control Shift F to format that. And let's call this list one, and this list two. And here I'm passing list one. And now instead of new, um, and this is going to be list one as well. And whoops. And that down here we're, we're going to have list two. So now um, I'm going to pass new camera to this list here, like this. And then I'm going to just carry on as before, passing list one to this um, function. So oh, this actually this doesn't have to be list one. So this is the same program as before, it's just that I've created another list and added cameras to it. Now that runs fine, um, just as before. Um, but now the temptation is to think here, well, what if I want to pass a list of cameras to this method? Um, because the temptation is to think that, okay, a uh, because, um, because camera, sorry, this should be camera, because camera is a subclass of machine, then you sort of think, well, array list of cameras must be a subclass of array list of machines. And then you think, well, surely here I can pass list two to this method. This method accepts an array list of machines, so I should be able to pass an array list of cameras, shouldn't I? And that's where you, uh, you have the problem, because in fact, an array list of a child class type or any more broadly speaking, any parameterized class, which is passed a type parameter of some child class type, is not a subclass of a um, of the same parameterized class with um, the parent type of class as its type parameter. So in this case here, machine camera extends machine. An array list of cameras is not a subclass of array list of machines, so you can't pass it to this method. Um, but it would seem reasonable that we, we should be able to somehow pass um, because uh, with polymorphism means that I could I could happily add cameras to a list of machines. And you think, well surely I should there should be some way that I could pass an array list of cameras here um, to this method. And in fact there is. Now the simplest way to do this is to say here question mark and the question mark here is a wild card. It's called the wild card in this context. And you read this as array list of unknown type, or more broadly speaking, um, you know, such and such a class um, of unknown type. And this this wild card means you can now pass um, an array list um, with any kind of type parameter to this method. So this line is fine. Now the disadvantage is that um, then you can only um, treat the items in the list as of being a type object, because object is the uh, ultimate parent of all um, classes in Java, that's object the capital O. So I, you can't now call any, um, you can't call any camera or machine specific methods, even if you pass in a list of cameras or machines, but this does allow you to pass any kind of array list in here. So this code is going to work. So it says I am a camera because I'm passing in um, cameras here. Or of course, if I pass in machines, um, I am a machine. And this works because the object uh, superclass, it's, it's, the, it's a superclass of both camera and machine. And it has a two string method that enables system.out.println to work. Um, so now um, the only way here you could call camera specific methods, let's say, or machine specific methods, 
is if you were to cast, um, as we saw in the, in the tutorial, you could the, the tutorial on downcasting and upcasting. If you know that this is a list of um, cameras, let's say, you could downcast this object to a camera object, and then you could call camera specific methods. But um, when you get the um, objects directly out of the list, they're going to be a type object because you use the wildcard here, and you don't know Java doesn't know what type of thing is going to be in that list. It could be any kind of type of thing. Um, now, um, if you're still with me on this, um, there's another couple of interesting things that you can do with these wildcards. And one is you can specify an upper bound to the wildcard. And so let's say I want to pass to this method an array list of machines or an array list of any subtype of machine. And that could be useful because let's say I've got a machine, let's say machine has a method here, let's say public void start. And let's just put this out here and say machine starting. So machine has a, a method that we can call. Um, and supposing I want to say, well, uh, whatever we pass to this method, it's going to be some kind of machine. Um, it's not necessarily going to be a machine. It could be a camera or anything that extends machine. You can use an upper bound on this wildcard and the syntax flat is fairly intuitive. You say question mark extends machine. And of course I'm talking about array list and machines and cameras here, but the stuff I'm talking about here applies to any um, parameterized classes and any kind of child and parent classes. Uh, now that's going to work just as before. It says I am a machine, but now um, I can actually get machine type um, values from my list. So if I save that, there's no error. Um, and if I if I would do a get on this list, um, like list dot get, I I can actually get machines from that list directly, which is what I'm doing in this loop actually. So here I could say um, value dot value dot start. Um, on the other hand, if I pass in a list of cameras, um, so that's going to work. It's saying machine starting. If I pass in a list of cameras, that's going to work as well. So it's calling the camera to string method, and it's saying machine starting because camera has inherited that starting method from machine. And I didn't override it in camera, which is why it's saying machine starting. But let's say camera has a specific method, a method that's specific to cameras, like public void snap. And let's say here, sys out um, snap. Sys taking a photo. Um, now, I can't in here call value dot snap um, because all I can call are uh, machine methods. Because um, the reason's clear if you think about it, because all Java knows is that this list that's passed in contains some kind of object that extends the machine, but it doesn't know which object. You know, um, the uh, objects that extend the machine here could have any kinds of methods. And Java doesn't know, this it's got no way of checking what methods it has. All it knows is it's some kind of machine. So you can therefore call machine methods. And uh, slightly um, slightly less useful, but perhaps worth knowing about, is you can specify a lower bound here. I could say, um, let's say, the wildcard, um, I can say super camera, let's say. And that means that whatever I pass to this method, let's call it show list two. Whatever I pass to this method now has to be camera or a superclass of camera. And uh, the trouble with that is um, superclasses of camera um, could have, um, they, they don't necessarily have the camera methods in them. So again, when you iterate through the list, you're really back to um, having to treat these as objects. So the only value really, so I can't call um, camera or machine methods here, um, but I can I can like use the two string method because even object has a two string method. Um, so let's pass in here. I could pass in either list one or list two. It doesn't matter because um, list one is full of machines which are a super type of camera, and list two is full of cameras which um, is um, is camera. So that. 
this is kind of an upper bounds of saying that um, this could be camera or a super type of camera and this could be machine or a subtype of machine so um, this is going to work as well so my second method there it works fine it's saying I am a machine down here um, but again if you wanted to use um, specific methods of camera or machine then you would have to know yourself what kind of type of thing was in this array list and you'd have to cast um, cast down downcast in this case to the appropriate type either that or use um, techniques like using you could use get class or instance of which we will probably look at in a future tutorial so um, that's I know this is a pretty confusing topic and um, I think I got through um, I don't know how many years many years of being a professional Java uh, programmer, both a um, permanent guy and a contractor, without actually knowing this stuff. And it's only recently that I've looked into this, and this was only added, I think, in Java 5 or something like that. So this is not a vital topic, but if you want to know what the wildcard does, um, that's the answer. And let's just, just for emphasis here, let's just copy that and um, create a final version of that. Just use a wildcard by itself. So this code's going to be on cave of programmer, uh, cave of programming dot com, and you can take a look at this and inspect it at your leisure if you want to. So um, so that should work as well. Okay, and that's it for this tutorial. And um, we covered so we covered like basic usage of generics in the last tutorial, which is really vital knowledge, and this stuff really is just the icing on the cake. And uh, in a future tutorial, we will we'll also cover creating your own parameterized classes um, but since that's something that you very rarely have to do I'm going to leave that for a few tutorials down the line and we're going to return to looking at some more basic um, fundamental things in core Java so that's it for this tutorial join me again next time and until next time happy coding